Yeah, good evening everyone. Um, just wanted to do a video today to, I guess, um, sort of look at some of the ideas and also welcome some feedback on what we might want to do for the, the power amplifier. So what I'd like to do is, is to make a nice symmetrical push-pull arrangement. At the moment, based on the current radio and the output of the final mixer, I'm going to need about 60 odd dB gain to, to get up to my sort of desired 20 odd watts. Um, I've already built a, a pre-driver, sort of a broadband pre-driver with, with a resistive load. Um, and what I might look to do is just tack that video on the end of this one. So once you finish talking about this, um, you'll see a, another short video looking at the pre-driver, which will feed into um, the Speedy 139 sort of driver here. But anyway, what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is, is having um, this BD139 would be a common emitter, um, voltage divider biasing, um, feeding this primary here, and then the output of which uh, will be a split secondary driving uh, a push-pull arrangement. Um, so this will be sort of the low power side and this will be the high power side. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm looking at using uh, a BD139, just two single BD139s on each, on each side. Uh, I'm thinking about having some emitter de degeneration just to, to hopefully stop some, some runaway. Um, thinking about uh, two 1 ohm resistors in parallel for that. Um, the bias for those two uh, transistors will be through the split uh, secondary here. Um, and just sort of a stock standard uh, Ford bias diode um, with a trim pot there with some filtering um, or bypass filtering to set the uh, the overall current for the, the bias current for those two devices. So that's what I'm thinking for um, the primary or say again the low power side. Um, the output of the two collectors will be recombined here. Again that will be split um, up through a, an RFC to 13.8 volts. Uh, and remind me, I'll come back and talk about this uh, this VB voltage here. That will then feed into um, the high power side. Um, looking at using these um, MRF644 Motorola devices. Um, they're 25 watt devices, power dissipation of, of 120 watts, uh, and um, can take around 4 amps. Um, continuous, so that's what I'm thinking about using for for the high power side. Um, similar arrangement, so uh, again split primary coming in to provide um, the 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 plus or minus or the um, the 180 degrees um, drive for those two transistors. Uh, the second, um, so again the center tap will be the um, the bias voltage. Same arrangement as on the low power side. And before I forget, that VB there, the voltage bias, uh, what I've called it, um, I'm going to have that coming from a current sense switch. Um, I've been playing around some time, well, a little while, uh, with um, IRF 510s, and I've smoked a few of those, and um, they really take off, not these ones here, but the IRF 510s, and uh, the current, uh, increases so rapidly that my my um, current sensing on the power supply doesn't cut in time and I've blown a few up. So what I'm thinking about doing is just having a simple circuit there with a couple of 3906s um, sensing the current coming uh, from the actual power amp itself up here. Um, looking at that voltage across here, switching on that transistor which then will drive this one uh, which will then um, if we haven't exceeded our current um, that we're set, um, which will be set by R, then this transistor here will be um, closed and that will provide us with our voltage, our VB, our voltage on the bias. So um, that's what the VB there is for both, both sides. Um, again on the high power side, um, thinking about having some emitter gener uh, degeneration, um, a lot of circuits don't. But I think I'll start with it, um, and if I think if I have it down to say half an ohm, then the voltage drop across that is not going to be too significant. Um, if the worst comes to the worst, then I can probably look to uh, not have any degeneration there. Um, 
we won't talk about this at this stage. Uh, on the output, again, um, having the, the primary split um, to allow us to feed in the VCC uh, through to the two collectors. Right, um, I'll come back to it, but uh, as I mentioned, I, I am looking at using some kind of negative feedback um, to, to basically set, um, hopefully to sort of, um, especially with the capacitive loading here, uh, to try and sort of equalize the gain over that uh, 3 to uh, 14 megahertz range. So we'll see if we can do that. And then thinking about some negative feedback here on both sides to to keep the overall power down to, to down to 20 watts. So that's what I'm, I'm thinking and, and certainly open to ideas or suggestions uh, if that's a, an approach or not. Um, I really can't find unfortunately some good theory books on the design of these and, and what the approach is. So it's been a bit of a reading around and trying to work out what's uh, the best way. So looking at the three uh, transformers, T1, T2 and T3. So for T1, um, a typical circuit often has 4 to 1. So if we assume that the input impedance would be coming in at roughly um, 50 ohms, then that gives us a on the secondary a 3.1 ohms um, across both those bases. Um, I want to present to that BD139 over here 200 ohms. So if I work on the assumption that I'm now trying to match 200 ohms as opposed to 50 to 3.1 ohms, then I get an N of 8.03, which is pretty close to 8. So um, uh, I'm going to use uh, 8 to 1. Um, so what I'm thinking is I'll, I'll use probably the binocular uh, forms, um, single loop coming through to the two bases. That's what we see here. And then that single tap on this side through to the to the bias, which is this one here. So that's what I'm thinking for T1. For T2, up here between the uh, the low power and the high power side, for lack of a bit of term. Um, if we just if we were just to consider that there, then typically this is also a four to one. So one on the primary and then four on the secondary. Again, if that's feeding a 50 ohm load then that's presenting across those two collectors um, 3.1 odd ohms. So if that's the case, and I've now got um, 3.1 here and 3.1 there, then ideally I want to have a T2 which is uh, 1 to 1. So what I'll probably try there um, to see how it works is just two single, uh, single loops. So coming out of the first stage will be a single loop coming through and it's split will be going up to VCC and then on the secondary side a single loop coming through that's the red one and then uh, that'll go down to to the bias which is down here so that's what I'm thinking for T2 for T3 as we just mentioned um, typically that's a, a 1 to 4 um, and typically feeds 50 ohms so um, if I take this, okay, so what I want to do, I want to ideally get uh, around 20 watts out of this. So if I rearrange this formula, well, in fact, use this formula here, RL equals VCC squared over 2 times PO for this arrangement here, then if I want 10 watts and I've got 13.8 volts, then I'm going to need to present to each collector 9.52 uh, 9 ohms, or double that, 19.04 ohms collector to collector. So that's right across here would be 19 ohms. So if we use that as, a, as a, an assumption, so I'm now trying to match 19 ohms to 50 ohms, gives me a turns ratio of 1.62. The ratio of 1.62 um, is approximately 5 to 8. So that's one option. I use 5 on the primary and 8 on the secondary. Or, I just go back and use the standard 1 to 4, and then use um, quite a bit of feedback to basically control how much power this is producing, uh, and get it back down to our desired 
um, 10 watts per collector or 20 watts total. So um, if anybody's had some experience in designing this arrangement, then yeah, please sing out. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a bit of um, sort of experimenting. Um, in terms of options for doing the feedback, um, this is one option here. So I've got the capacitor there for uh, the DC blocking, so we don't um, short circuit from a DC point of view. And then the resistor, uh, I haven't named, would, would have to be worked out to... Uh, to, to provide the best amount of um, negative feedback. Uh, another option which I've seen, um, so I just look at a, a, a part of that circuit, is you have coming off the two collectors another small transformer here, and then if, we, if it is the primary then on the secondary side, that feeds two resistors that go to the bases of those two um, transistors to provide negative feedback. Again, um, no design notes that I could find on how to do the maths on that. So um, that would be very much up to, to experiments to work out what, um, what would work. So again, if someone's had some experience in designing these and um, says that this option here is better than this option, then please sing out. Um, and same with this uh, capacitive loading here. Um, I've seen sort of a lot of options for that um, quite often they're in parallel um, of the same value. Uh, again, I'd have to try and work out, well, I don't know, there is no guidance that I can see on what that value of capacitance would be. So it could very much be um, an SOT device where you actually work out what you need in the circuit to, uh, to actually uh, make it nice and stable. So um, I'll probably leave it there. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. Um, Again, as we sort of mentioned before, I'm quite keen to. I really this this appeals to me that, that how symmetrical it is, uh, symmetrical it is, which is good too for the second harmonic suppression. So I'm looking at sort of using this cop board and putting it through a um, a cheap sort of CNC machine, which I got brought in um, to try and uh, and to create a, a nice sort of tracked arrangement on this copper board to, to, to make a really nice circuit. So it just means sort of playing around with the various depths. Um, obviously that was quite deep because it went all the way through. Um, so you can sort of see there's the various depths, just trying to get an idea of how that CMC, CNC machine works and uh, how much the, the, the actual milling head drags depending on depth and speed. But some of those, um, I'm not quite sure how well they'll come up on the camera, are actually quite fine. So these are all cut using a 15 degree um, mill bit. Uh, I understand 60 degrees is probably better, so I've got uh, some of those now. So I just need to uh, basically do some, some playing around. But that's the plan anyway, is to, is to mill this copper board and to make a nice, um, a nice um, circuit board for this, for this arrangement. So right, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I will tack on to the end of this portion of the video one I recorded this morning, which was just playing around with um, what I've sort of notionally called a pre-driver, um, which would go into here, just sort of mucking around with a, a 3904 and, and to see what that could produce. And um, yeah, not too bad actually, so I, I might look at using that to drive into here. Um, my thinking is I'm, I'm going to need to be able to present to this portion of the amp probably around an, uh, 1 watt. Now say again, 1 milliwatt, I think. Um, one watt, one milliwatt. Oh, I did double check that one. Um, to to get my sort of desired wattage, um, but that's the plan anyway. So, like I say, I won't ramble on any further. If anybody's got some ideas or some suggestions or thinks that it might be uh, a way to go, please sing out, and um, I think we'll just start building it up. I think the process will be just to start from left to right. We'll build this up. Um, we'll put across that transformer a notional load. Uh, which will be in that case six ohms roughly, um, and we get that going, and then we'll we'll build up and we'll just keep moving to the right, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, 73s. Um, like I say, I'll tack on a, a, another video to this, and um, we'll see you next time. Okay, cheers all. Hi everyone. Okay, so we've started to work on the the power amplifier for for the radio, uh, and. I think I'm going to need, a, need around 60 dB all up gain to to get our signal that's coming out of our 
uh, our final mixer uh, up to the, around that sort of 20 watt range. Um, I'm going to do that more than likely over four stages. Um, but what I want to do for a start to lead into that, that final pallet fire brick uh, or, 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 or stages, or multiple stages, is to first uh, do a very simple uh, uh, amplifier here based on the, the, uh, the 2N3904. Uh, and we'll look at the circuit very, very shortly, just to initially boost up that very, very low uh, level signal up to somewhere in the region of um, ideally around one milliwatt that I could then start to feed into the uh, the other amplifier. If it's a bit less than that, then that's fine, but sort of around there would be, uh, would be quite nice. So um, what I decided to do is make up this circuit here. Um, it's a very straightforward circuit, voltage divider biasing based on a, uh, a 2N3904. Uh, what I've elected to do, let me just zoom out a little bit here, uh, is just again, as I've sort of seen previously, for this particular one, just set um, our, our quiescent current at 10 milliamps. Uh, I'm going to just from that rule of thumb set the voltage of the emitter to be a tenth of VCC. Uh, VCC is 13.8 volts. Uh, the beta for that, um, the FT is 300 megs, so 300 divided by our lowest frequency um, gives us around 81. That's right, not our lowest frequency in the in the 80 meter band. Um, what I've decided to do is not have an inductor um, in the the collector as a load. Uh, instead, I'm just going to use a resistor uh, to try and um, give this a little bit more of a broadband tendencies. So I'm going to arbitrarily set that collector resistor to be 200 ohms. Uh, and then we'll ideally have a load uh, of 200, so any impedance matching later on will be ideally matching whatever's downstream back to our 200 ohms. So just coming down, we can start to work out the various values. So for our emitter resistor, um, it's at 13.8 volts times a tenth, that's the voltage there, divided by our 10 milliamps, comes out to be 138 ohms. I'm going to go slightly lower and use 120 ohms uh, just to make sure I've got that current flowing through. For R2, as we've seen before, it's the emitter at the base, which is the emitter is voltage plus 0.7, so 1.38 plus 0.7, and then to make sure this is nice and stiff, uh, we want to have at least 10 times the base current going through there. So 10 times our 10 milliamps divided by 81, assuming that our emitter current is essentially the same as our collector current. Uh, it comes out at 1684 ohms, so we'll use 1800 uh, as a standard value. R1 on the voltage divider biasing, um, that's going to be this voltage here um, minus this voltage divided by the current through it, so 13.8 volts, just uh, I'm going to ignore the voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistor, um, it's not going to be very much at 10 milliamps. Uh, so we'll just take the value here at 13.8 volts minus 2.08, which is the, the, uh, the voltage at the base, divided by, in this particular case, again, I use electron flow, so it's 10 times through here, plus our one more times base current, gives 11. So 11 times our base current comes out at 86.30, so we we'll use 8200, or 8.2 k ohm resistor. As we said before, we'll just set our collector resistor to be 200 ohms, and then um, we will set our various capacitors, the coupling capacitors and the input and the output circuit as well as our bypass. So I'm going to run this thing flat out uh, in terms of um, gain uh, at 100 uh, nanofarads. Um, I'm not going to worry about any kind of uh, feedback on this because the signal coming in is so low um, that I'm not going to run the risk of, um, of running this into saturation which we'll see in a sec. And just doing our, our idiot check, uh, I'm an idiot not you guys, um, 100 nanofarads at 3.5 megs, which is our lowest frequency. So XC equals 1, 1 over 2 pi FC. So just substituting in 1 over 2 pi, 3.5 megs times 100 nanofarads comes out at 0.5 ohms, uh, or 0.45 ohms, which is which is fine. That's um, We're not going to have very many losses at all um, across those two coupling capacitors. So getting back to the circuit, um, what we're going to do here is just uh, do a few checks on the gain for this. So just above here we can see we've got the uh, the SIG gen just up here. Um, and then that's feeding into 
Let's see, let's get the O-scope there in the, in the background. So now we've got the um, the SIG gen coming through this back wire here into here, and that's feeding through um, as an input into our amplifier. And then the output uh, we've got our 200 ohm, if we can just see there, uh, 200 ohm collector resistor, and then uh, on the other side of that output coupling capacitor we've got another 200 ohm resistor to earth. So this will be for intents and purposes um, the input impedance or what the uh, transformer will make it look like um, will be the load on that particular amplifier. So what we're going to do is we'll just check out to see what our gains are looking like. Um, I did model this on LT Spice um, and it looks reasonably okay. Well, in fact, it looks okay. So um, we'll just see if that actually turns out to be the case in real life. So once again, down here, we can sort of in the corner here. We've got that little PTT switch, so we can key things up. Um, so what we have here is 7.1 megs, and we have uh, our signal generator is 0.1 volts peak to peak, and here we have. Uh, 3.3.4 divisions at 0.5. So 3.4 divided by uh, 2 is 1.7. We said it was 100 uh, millivolts or 0.1 volts as the input. So 20 log V out over V in should give us around 24.6 dB. Uh, 24.6 dB, which is good. Um, so 1.7 volts. Um, if we then convert that to uh, to RMS voltage and then work out what the power is being uh, consumed um, or dissipated by that resistor, uh, it should turn out to be about 2 milliwatts. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, I won't do it here um, as expected as the, oh, well, as the frequency uh, goes down. Um, our overall gain for the amplifier goes up um, and as we go high in frequency the gain goes down um, to be expected with the, um, the the amplification factor of that transistor so if we were to take it up to 14 14 megs so that's 14.2 and we can see there now we sort of see lost a little bit more there so one, two, three, four, four divisions at point two should come out to be about 800 uh, millivolts. So 800 millivolts divided by 100 millivolts, and then 20 log that comes out to be about 18 dB, um, which is good. And then if we were to go down in frequency, you can certainly see how the gain increases. So now down to three point, that's three point two. So we're taking the middle of the 80 meter band, 3.7, um, and we've got that, uh, what are we saying here? That's sort of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.7. So 4.7 um, has 2.4 volts at 100 millivolts uh, coming in is 27.6 dB. So um, I'm going to, to live with that for now. I'm not going to do any more tweaking on that. Um, and I think we'll just see how that goes with using that as a um, what I'm sort of notionally just calling a pre-driver uh, that will eventually lead into um, the main power amplifier. So let's leave that there um, and uh, we'll start working up the next stages and uh, we'll see how things go.